a little update about this Clean Chesapeake Coalition uh, because the uh, county in, uh, invested $25,000 into this <coughs> issue concerning the Conwingo Dam. Uh, I think it's prudent that we ever periodically give a uh, a little update of what took place, and I'll make it very brief. Uh, no sense going into all of this, but uh, in the very beginning, uh, we were approached by Dorchester County about joining this coalition to really bring awareness to the Conwingo Dam and the damage that it's done to the Chesapeake Bay. <clears throat> For me, my entire lifetime, it's been uh, the, the, the disappearing of all the things, uh, the different types of seafood and the aquatic grasses and stuff was the waterman's fault for over harvesting, it was the farmer's fault for polluting the waters, it was, it was everybody's fault in the world. Uh, nobody wanted to take a real hard look, or any type of look actually, at the damage done by the Conway Doak Dam. What brought it to light was this WIP program that uh, through this TMD, to the, through these TMDLs that w with a very large price tag of about 14 and a half billion with a big dollars associated with it that was going to, these new regulations and things that were going to cost uh, 14 and a half billion estimated, uh, some people estimated to be much higher than that, that, uh, you know, maybe we, the bigger bang for the buck was to take a look at possibly where one of the largest uh, Un and unarguably the largest concentration of pollution comes down through the Susquehanna, uh, the the Susquehanna River through the Conwingo Dam and the, uh, the silting issue that's come down there that's destroyed pretty much all the oyster bars and things in the upper part of the bay. Well, when we were approached, some of the, it was, it was amazing to me because I thought, how about this? Finally, in my lifetime, we'll have all the environmentalists, watermen, farmers, I mean, we'll all be together and we'll be taking a look at this issue at the Conwingo Dam that, in a lot of us's opinion, has really been the culprit of the damage that's been done and a lot of the people in the, up and down the, the waterfront has taken, has been blamed for a lot of this stuff. Some of it, rightfully so, but most of it, I think it's hard to, I think if you look around you can see where people have made great strides in trying to clean things up and uh, the truth of the matter is today it's in worse shape than it was 30 years ago. All the things that we've been made to do have really turned out to not work well at all. So this coalition was, was created in order to try to bring awareness to what's going on at the Conwingo Dam. The, uh, to date, there are seven counties. We've each, each put up $25,000 in order to, to uh, hire a law firm to look into this issue, to find the, the get the science, uh, take a look at the science. We were heavily criticized um, by all the so-called experts that come out of the woodwork. I would get, I would get called 7.30 in the morning while I was still in the shower from, from people like the Chesapeake Bay Foundation who tried to tell us not to join this coalition. found that extremely puzzling to me, why somebody whose motto is save the bay would, would not want to take a look at something so important to the bay. It's just, it's still, I just can't, I, I can't, I can't understand that and I probably never will. But just to give you an update, since that coalition has started, and I've been around the seafood business and the water business, I'm, I'm not personally involved in it anymore, but I've been around it my entire life. Nobody, and I don't care who it is, nobody wanted to talk about the dam. It was too easy to blame the farmer, the waterman, and everybody else. So nobody wanted to talk about the Conwingo Dam until this coalition had, was formed, and now it seems like, and I'm pleased to be able to announce, that everybody seems like they want to talk about it now. There is a, uh, for starters, I have a letter from the Citizens Advisory Committee, and just to tell you who that is, Citizens Advisory Committee to the Chesapeake Executive Council is a group of 29 citizens, volunteers from all walks of life and experiences, appointed by the governors of Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and the mayor of the District of Columbia, and by the board of directors of the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay. 
this group of people um, has written two letters, one to FERC, which is Federal Emergency Energy Regulatory Commission, and, it, and if you read this letter, I'm not going to take time to read these letters out loud, but if you read that letter, it would sound just like the coalition wrote that. It's, it's highlighting all the problems with the sediment behind the dam, all the problems that it's created, and some of the things that they would like to see taken care of before this relicensing, relicensing of this Conway No Dam takes place. And that's going to take place in the next year. So that's why it's a very critical time that if you're going to get anything done up there to try to make a difference in the Bay, now's the time you have to do it. And the Citizens Advisory Committee has sent a letter asking, giving them some suggestions, telling them that it's a very important issue and, and some of the ways that they think they should try to mitigate these issues. Also, they, that same group sent a letter to the United States Environmental Protection Agency asking for them to get involved in it. Um, Bruce Michael, director of the Resource Assessment Service at the Department of Natural Resources, had, a, had a, uh, an article in the Star Democrat. The Lower Susquehanna River Watershed Assessment Team might have the answer. That was in Kent County's newspaper, another group that is talking about the Conwingo Dam and its problems. Um, got a press release. This, uh, for those, Delegate Maggie McIntosh is the chairman of the Environmental Matters Committee in Annapolis. One of the, one of the strongest uh, committee members in Annapolis without any, without any exaggeration. She has just been appointed as the chairman of the Chesapeake Bay Commission for this coming year. Um, let me just, it says Maggie, let me, let me wait a minute. Anyhow, to, to, to streamline this a little bit, she has been chosen to be the chairman of the Chesapeake Bay Commission and also sits on the Environmental Matters Committee and is the chairman of it. And she says that in this letter that her number one pro priority this coming legislative year will be to work on finding ways to solve the issues and take care of the problems at Conway No Dam. That's a very, that's a very big, important statement from a very powerful individual. Another, another letter that was sent from the Chesapeake Bay Commission signed by Maggie McIntosh, Maryland House of Delegates, talking about the problems that are created at the Conolingo Dam and some of the things we need to, to solve it. I guess the, the only th the, what I'm trying to say is that uh, the, when we first went to join this coalition, nobody, you know, we were, we were criticized by doing it and nobody wanted to talk about it. And now there's many, many people from all part, walks of life um, people that follow the Chesapeake Bay and are very concerned about it, everybody's talking about it. So I guess for our investment, um, we, are, we at least have raised the conversation to where uh, a lot of important people are now talking the same language we are. Will anything come of it? Only time will tell. We, as a coalition, we've been before the Republican Caucus in, in uh, Annapolis. We've got some dates where we're going to go before the Democratic Caucus in Annapolis. We've met with some different people and the coalition continues to gather information. We will also have a seat at the table at FERC, which is that relicensing, the, the relicensing time uh, when people sit around the table and uh, talk about Conolingo relicensing itself. So uh, still to this day, there's a lot of people talking about it. Um, noticeably, one is not the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, whose motto is Save the Bay. Um, I still find that to be a, um, bothersome, uh, hard to figure out. But because Kent County has made that contribution, ever periodically we'll give a little update on it. And that's about the end of it for tonight. Ed, do you have a question? Uh, Ron, in your work with the licensing, do you know how long this contract is with the the power company, Exxon? It would be 40 years this time. 46 years. 
Forty six. So they've added six more. Yeah. Okay. So One thirty originally. Yeah. Forty six year contract. So if uh, that's why the timing is so important that if anything is going to happen, it's got to happen before they relicense this last time, where you can forget it or you can forget anything. 